Hey guys, how you doing? It's Keptech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over Office 365 troubleshooting for Outlook. Obviously, if you're new in my channel, know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. So today I want to go over troubleshooting Outlook and Outlook issues. And I have a PowerPoint slide I want to go over. I've done this before in the past, but it's more like an updated version of it because certain things, you know, technology is always changing. So you need to know how to troubleshoot Outlook, if that makes sense. So we're going to go over that today. And uh, Office 365 stuff is always fun. I'm excited about this one. I created a slide and, you know, just excited about it. So let me share my screen. Hopefully it's infor informative and you learned something today. Okay, so screen. We're going to do screen three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the slide to screen three. And I'm going to share. And yeah, there we go. And then what we're going to do is, so you guys could see the whole thing, because you probably... Uh, there we go. So Outlook common issues for Office 365 is Outlook. Outlook is a pain in the butt sometimes. You know, it is what it is. Um, it's I'm sharing the wrong screen for some reason. So let me share again. Let me put it on the right screen, which is screen one. There we go. It should be good now. You should be able to see it. All right. There we go. So common issues for Office 365. We're going to go over this, this one. So Outlook would open. So there is this thing called safe mode. So sometimes the profile gets corrupted. There's a conflict. It's damaged. The add-on. So when we talk about Outlook in Office 365, and I'm going to open up Outlook because I have Outlook open right now. So give me a second. I'll show you. So Outlook has add-on add-ons. So basically what an add-on is, basically a, a, it gives it an extra functionality. I don't know, look, and this could be anything. This could be like Zoom, for example. So if you go into, and I'll show you, if you go into google.com and you type Zoom download for Outlook, right? Uh, you could go in here and probably going to the wrong one. Here we go. You go here and, and download Microsoft Outlook for Zoom, which is right here. I already have it installed, but sometimes what happens is these add-ons get corrupted. And they cause Outlook not to work properly, which is kind of a problem because our user is trying to get his emails set up, trying to send emails, trying to do stuff on Outlook, and it doesn't work, right? So you need to know how to troubleshoot this. So the best way to troubleshoot this is if you do run, and if you do Outlook, Outlook.excel.safe would open in safe mode. So what that means is from, from a non-technical standpoint, the add-ons like Zoom will not open by default. It's just it will just open default Outlook with no add-ons on it, no add-ons on it. So what does that mean? How do you what do you know about add-ons? How does that work? Or where do add-ons come from? Or how do you remove them? How do you add them? How do they get in, installed on a on a Outlook application? How does that work? Right. So going back to this, I have Zoom right now installed on it. So if you go into file and if you go into manage add-ons right here. It will take you to the browser, which is not, that's, that's not what I'm trying to do. If you go into options, and if you go into add-ons, or add-ins rather, and then if you go into com add-ins, here is where you control the add-ins that, that are selected by default, that open by default on Outlook. So sometimes the add-ins get corrupted and it tells you where it is, C, program files, x86, Zoom, Outlook, front, et cetera, et cetera. So this loads a startup when you, turn, when you open up Outlook for the first time, it, it loads automatically, right? So sometimes you'll get calls with customers like, oh, man, it's not working. This is not working. That's not working. Does that not? So to fix this problem, sometimes the add-in doesn't show up because it's unchecked. Like literally, it, 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 Outlook crash. And Outlook, when it crashes for some reason, it, it, it tries to remove the add-on by unselecting it. So you, all you got to do is literally just go here, go to file, go to options, go to add-ons, go to com add-ons. And then hit Zoom and then hit OK, right? And then you're finding the ending out to that. So sometimes that doesn't work. So what you have to do is you have to close out Outlook. You have to go to the control panel, like so. You have to go to uninstall programs and change this to the letter Z to go to Zoom. And then you have to repair it or uninstall it, reinstall it. And that fixes that problem. So even creating a new profile may fix that problem sometimes with add-ons now with Outlook crashing and not working. So if you want to create a brand new profile, you can by going into control panel, changing this to large icons, and then going to mail right here. 
and it's going on my other screen. And then you can actually do show profiles and you could create a brand new profile. Let me call it Kevin and hit okay. And then what happens is it's gonna it's gonna try to find that email or it's gonna try to find kevtechitsupport.com and it's gonna try to add it and it's gonna prompt me for my password. It should prompt me for my password. It says it's been added successfully, but it looks like it didn't prompt for my password. And then you hit okay and you hit finish. And now you, you could change the the now it's a new profile, right? So you could change Outlook to Kevin, hit okay, and then reopen Outlook, and then you should be good to go after that. So it sees it's retrieving mailbox settings. So the profile is different now. So now it's going to download all my emails all over again. So that's how you fix that problem as well. So there's certain ways, there's several ways to fix it. Um, I usually don't recommend creating a new profile because when you create a brand new profile, uh, they have to download all their emails again. And this, if this, if this is like a C-level person and they have a lot of emails, it's going to take forever for them to download all their emails. So um, if you're going to do this solution, if they're going to literally do this and they have a lot of emails and they're, that looks going to crash like crazy if they have like 20,000 emails, right? So just being realistic with that. So be careful with, if you do this. If you, if you do do this, what I recommend or what I used to do when I work IT support is I create a new profile and then give them a workaround. So that, oh, you could go to office.com um, and then you could go, you could go to... Um, this is my email address, by the way. You guys have my email address, right? So I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to uh, um, say you, you, you guys can email me. It's totally fine. So, um, so this is my email address, right? Uh, yes. And what you could do is for as a workaround, you could open up uh, OWA, Outlook Web Application, which is here, and then they could go, they could use their email, they could use the OWA for the time being. So this is OWA. They could use this for the time being while while their emails are loading up on Outlook, if that makes sense. Because this is going to be very slow. They won't be able to send emails. They may be like finicky, may act a little wonky because they, they have a thousand emails, uh, 10,000 emails. It's just like, oh my goodness. So while this is loading, you could go here and just, you know, give them that, if that makes sense. So let me go back to the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So yeah, so it, it says it right there. Like start Outlook and save mode. Hold control while launching, create a new profile, repair it, whatever works for you, right? Here's the issue I told you about, like I talked about literally like a few minutes ago. So it's slow performance is because they have a large mailbox, too many add-ins or outdated software. You're going to have to archive emails, uh, disable add-ins. Uh, I find repair PSC file does not work for me. I'm not sure if you guys ever had success with that, but it has never worked for me. This is recommended by Microsoft, but in my opinion, it has never worked for me in my entire life. So all emails can get archived. So like if you go to Outlook right here, um, you could archive these emails. Uh, in some cases, some companies use uh, Proofpoint to archive emails. Some companies may use something else like Mimecast. Some companies may use something else. So you can archive these emails if you like, uh, depending on your retention policy. Because every company has their own retention policy. So this is a sign policy. The retention policy, one month, one month, and 30 days, one week. So here is more retention policies. Uh, retention policy, selected policies, and click apply. So one month, delete. So one week, delete. You could uh, never delete. So you could change your retention policy. And here is the retention policy. Um, you could set it up. So delete temporarily recover five years of the message received. Policy was set by the administrator cannot be removed. One year, six months, one month, one month delete, one week delete, never delete. So depending on your company, like an email may be good for six months, an email may be good for one year, an email may be good for five years. So every company is different. Just keep that in mind. But this is good information right here. And then you could change the settings if you have if you're an admin. And if you do, you're an exchange. You're an admin for Exchange Admin Center. Um, you could set that up real quick. So, if you're an Exchange Admin, you could literally change the retention policy. So there, there's mail flow, remote alerts, rows, um, public folders, public folder mailboxes. 
in the settings, mail flow. So if you want to set up your retention policy, you can do it. Um, you can do it and change it if you want. That's entirely up to you. I'm just trying to get out of this. There you go. Uh, give me a second. And then... Yeah, so it's recipient mailboxes. So retention policy is right here. You could change it, but I'm not going to change it. But if you go to navigate to recipients and you go to mailboxes, like if I go to let's just say Dre, uh, we go to mailboxes, mailbox settings, size restriction, email forwarding. Um, you should be able to change this. Give me a second. Mailbox, mailbox retention policies right here. Policies are right here. Manage mailbox policies. Here we go. So you could change this to something else if you want. No policy. I don't have any policies created right now, but you could change all that. Just wanted to show you that real quick. because you, you need to know how to do this, which is useful information. All right. So that's that. Let me, clear, let me cancel this. Let me minimize this. So that's stuff you need to know. Um, go to the next slide. And I probably need to make this smaller because my head is probably getting in the way or something like that. But... There we go. This is basically what it is. Uh, we're going to go back to presentation mode. Uh, right. And this is an annoying one too, like index issue search functionality not working. And I'll make it smaller so you guys can see it. So this is a problem too. So I'm just going to share it like this for now. Because I don't want to take up all the space on, my, on, on the screen. But this is another problem too. So you can go here and, and build your index. So you go to the control panel, like exactly literally what it says, right? You actually could go here and actually fix your index. So this is your index. Go to control panel, go to index option. Um, if you don't see it here, I mean it's right there, but if you don't see it, you can, and then you just rebuild it. So you do click on this one, you do advance. And there's a the file types. And you could rebuild you could rebuild your your um search functionality and then the other way to fix it too uh if you go to services and then if you go to um sometimes this fixes it too if you hit w and then there's windows search over here somewhere you gotta look for it windows search and if you stop it and you start it again that actually fixes the search functionality and this is for emails too this is for files emails is for everything right so that's another way to fix that problem. There's several ways to do it. Um, and hopefully that helps you out. So that's another way to fix this problem. I've gone over this before, but it's good information to know. It's like a refresher for you guys. Uh, this one cannot send and receive emails. Is another one. Yeah, certain, sometimes firewall is blocking it. Certain network settings is blocking it. So you need to know about this. Um, they can't send emails also. It could also be because their inbox is full. If they can't send emails, it's because their outlook is having issues because of connectivity issues because their, their internet is, is not working. Could be several reasons why uh they can't send emails. Also sometimes for some dumb reason um we accidentally click on work offline right and then when you click work offline <laughs> it, it it doesn't allow you to send emails. This is offline right so sometimes someone accidentally clicks on this right it sounds silly but if you uncheck it again you should be good to go after that and fix that that fixes that problem. So hopefully that, that answers your question. Um, and then the next one, uh, Outlook freaking crashes could be uh, add-ins again, corrupt profile, all day software. Sometimes a, a quick repair will fix it. So if you go to control panel, uh, you go to 
categories, you go to uninstall program. And then if you go to your Office 365 suite, and then you go to change, and you just said yes and change it, and you have the option to do quick repair or online repair. Uh, I, I usually do online repair. That's just my opinion. Quick repair for me doesn't really do much for me. That was just, this is my experience. I could be wrong. You guys can let me know down in the uh, comments below if you ever had issues with, or if you ever had uh, a fix for that, a quick repair fixes it for you. For me, it has never worked. So I either run the, the online repair or I install the whole thing and reinstall the whole office suite. That's just my experience with it. That's just, I'm just giving you my opinion. All right. And then next one. Password prompt, again, this could be because it's a corrupted profile server issue. Uh, also could be because of credentials manager. So if you go to credentials manager, sometimes your old password is here. So you have to go and delete it. Like, for example, what, let's go over uh, Office 365 is not here. But you go here and just remove it. So you would modify, either remove, you should remove it. So that does happen sometimes, unfortunately, but that's a, that's a common issue. Password broke up also pop up if their AD account is locked out. So you may have to go to Active Directory and unlock their account. There could be several reasons why they're having that issue. It could also be that their password has expired. I've seen that happen before. So there's several reasons why that would happen, if that makes sense. So, all right. Number eight, uh, attachments went open. It could be the attachments are blocked. Uh, it could be checking file associates. The attachment is not blocked by Outlook Security. says we do block, we do block attachments. It could also be that the attachment does open, but it's opening on the wrong thing. Like for example, I'll give you like a real life example. Like someone sends you a doc, someone sends you a, a document. Like this guy sent me his resume, right? Um, and then if it, it opens up on on um on edge instead of the uh, instead of PDF, right? So you double click on it, it opens up somewhere else. So like that stuff is very important. You should know how that works, right? So understand how that works right sometimes attachments will not open because we block it we could block it so that's the reason why it won't open and then number nine is corrupt pst files your files do get uh your pst files do get corrupted sometimes so you could run a repair on it um it's in, that's why like sort a lot of the jobs have backups of certain things like they'll back up certain things and then you don't have to worry about it depending on the job but PST, pst files do get corrupted and then last but not least calendar issue sync issue so sometimes to fix that issue you have to remove the calendar and then re-add it again so like if you go to outlook and say for example you have access to someone's calendar and if you go to calendars and there, there's a calendar here that doesn't belong to your report so like for example tech support and you want to you want to add a calendar you can add a calendar again right add a calendar and then browse for it and then browse for tech support right so like what happens is sometimes you count these calendars get corrupted and you have to re-add it again. So you can remove it. So like if you right click on it, you should be able to re remove this calendar. Sometimes it, sometimes it, you have to re-add it and remove it again. It doesn't let me delete it because I'm clicking on the wrong thing. But well, here we go. Yeah, it still doesn't let me delete it. There we go. I delete the calendar. Yes, delete calendar. So you could you could literally remove this calendar if, if it's not working. You could always re-add it again. So like if you do open address, do tech, um, and then hit OK and it'll come back again. So you could definitely do that. That fixes that problem with, with calendar issues. So sometimes removing and re-adding it solves that problem. And hopefully that makes sense. All right. And then that's it for me. That's I'm gonna stop sharing. That's it for me. That's that's all those like common outlook issues. Um, I have uh, so many more. These are just some of them, but you will encounter this in your job. With that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope this helps you out. Take it easy. Take care. Bye. Have a good one.